Hi, Jed here from Cook Culture. What you're about to watch is fairly extensive. It's a how to care for your iron cookware video. But before we start, I want to point out that some people may disagree with my methods and may think or say what I'm doing is wrong. This is fine with me because the way I season pans works for me and all of the pans in all of our teaching facilities. I've witnessed and learned that there are a few ways to get the same results. And as long as you are following a few rules, then you should make out okay. Rule number one, don't use olive oil, ever. Don't use it to cook with, and definitely don't use it to season with. This goes for any fruit oil. Only use seed oils, and we recommend grapeseed as it's easy oil to keep in the kitchen. Some people use coconut or flax. Again, whatever works for you, but stop heating olive oil on steel or iron. Rule number two, once you've seasoned, keep seasoning. The initial seasoning process is critical, but it's just as important for you to keep the pan seasoned once you have seasoned it. That is the main point of this video. Rule number three, soap is not the devil, but you don't need it. Some people will tell you that you cannot use soap on iron. Some people will tell you it's fine. Where this comes from is that not all dish soap is the same. Some of the big brand names have harsh chemicals in them and will soften or strip the seasoning off your pans, but mild soap probably won't. The brands we sell doesn't. And this is why there's confusion out there. As you see in the video, I use kosher salt to clean the pans when they need it. And don't use soap. Water and a light scrubbering and I'm ready to re-season. Rule number four, a well-seasoned pan can be soaked. Quite often, once I'm done cooking, I will take my hot, warm pan and run some warm or cold water in it. The steaming helps loosen any cooked on food and makes cleanup fast when I get to it after I'm finished cooking. The issue is that if you don't have good coating, then this will lead to rusting. If, it, if this has happened, then you haven't seasoned enough. I hope you will find this video helpful and as always, I would love to hear from you. Jed from Cook Culture and to further support you guys on how to best look after your carbon steel and cast iron pans I've got an array of different pans here that are in different stages of disrepair and need support to be perfect so first off we've got a 12 inch fry that somebody has worked pretty hard to get whatever they cooked on uh, the pans in in relatively good shape but as you can see here it's quite scratched up and this has gone through the seasoning so just going to go through the simple process of how to re-season this after the the season has been scratched off uh, we have a pan that's been used and not re-seasoned when it's uh, ready to go away so we're just going to go over the, the simple process of a pan that's in really really good shape but needs a post seasoning so then we've got a pan that has a bit of buildup that's starting on this pan and just a little bit on the surface of the pan and this will start to happen over time. A little bit of carbonization is happening and we need to just take this down just a bit and then re-season that up. Then we have something that's got quite a nasty, sticky, yucky mess on it and I haven't even started to go at this yet but this isn't going to be successful for anything that's going to be cooked on it it's actually sticky to my hand so whatever's cooked on it this may come off really easily or it may need to be scoured down and be seasoned but we'll go over that one and then finally a piece of uh, enameled cast iron a lot of people don't think about the seasoning enamel uh, because you buy it, it's got a coating on it. A lot of us think coating means that you don't need to do anything to it. It's not quite the case. As you'll see on the surface here, there's some kind of models, modeled spots. And in the modeling means dryness. And in the dryness is where the sticking is going to occur. So it's got a bit of seasoning. It's, it's shiny enough, but it needs to be seasoned appropriately. So we'll go over this. This is one of the only pieces that I... I would maybe do in the oven, but we can easily do this from a stove top also. I find from the post-seasoning process, 
the the uh, hob process is the best way to go. So putting on to the, uh, the stove top and not in the oven. So where we want to get the pans to today is that is a beautifully seasoned pan. So the pan has been looked after from the get-go. It's a really nice golden color. It's got beautiful sheen all over. It's got a, there's a tiny bit of a, of a grease to it, but no stickiness to it. There's no tackiness to it. There's no buildup in any of the corners here. So you're, you're gonna heat this up, add a little bit of, of either butter or a bit of grapeseed oil and cook whatever you want beautifully in that. It's gonna slide right out. So that's a beautifully done pan. So what we're gonna do is start with the 12 inch fry pan and we'll heat a couple of these up at the same time. Uh, and then we'll go to work on, on seasoning these. Okay, so first off, what we're gonna do is we're heating up these three pans. We've got the, the one big guy that we went over that we need to season because it goes scratched when it was being either used or cleaned or something happened to it that it needs to be touched on. This one was used and just not seasoned before it was put away. So whoever used it last just didn't do the, the post seasoning. And the post seasoning is the most important for setting ourselves up for being successful for the next way uh, that we're gonna cook. So it's a lot like using a knife. It's always best to sharpen your knife when you're done, put it away, and then it's sharp when you're ready to go. Because usually you, know, you start cooking, you're busy, you want things to be ready to go. Sharp knife and a seasoned pan. So then the third one is the one that has a little bit of buildup on it. And what we're gonna do, I'm not sure what that is. We're going to heat that up and use a little bit of oil and some rock salt and see if we're gonna get anything off on that. Uh, and see what happens with uh, if we clean that off. If we don't, then then it'll need to have a deeper cleaning. And deeper cleaning is either using something quite aggressive, like a barkeeper's friend. Um, well, you know, if you don't want to use something quite aggressive, use some dish soap and use a metal scubby, and that will be your kind of first way to go. If it's really cooked on, like it's carbon on hard carbon on steel, you'll need to use uh, something like a barkeeper's friend or even using SOS or an oven cleaner. Uh, you know, putting in the oven clean on it, putting it into the oven, letting it sit, and it just kind of work through. You get it down to raw metal, and then start again. It is all fairly harsh chemical, so the more we can do to get away from using the chemical, the better. So, um, these pans are starting to come up to heat. I've got them on a, a seven out of, a, out of a nine here on an, an induction hob. Um, if it was on flame, you know, maybe somewhere on the same, around a six, uh, six or seven, it, it really just depends on how long you're gonna wait. You don't wanna go up to an eight or a nine. Uh, you don't wanna start flash smoking these things. You wanna build your oil on. The grapeseed oil that we're using, we always use and only use grapeseed oil for seasoning our fry pans. What we're gonna be doing is trying to polymerize the surface. So we're gonna put some oil on, we're gonna do just a small amount. We're gonna rub a nice light surface on here and then we're gonna allow it just to start to smoke and then take it off and cool. So this was one of the pans in which uh, just needed to have a, a, a touch on to season. So we're just gonna put on maybe, all in all there was a teaspoon and a half in there maybe, something like that. But see how it's already starting to smoke as soon as I get that on there? And it's just kind of smoking lightly, it's not too much. I'm going to get the power off on that one. Get that nice and smooth on there. So that pan is in good shape. It just needs a build up on there. And it's not smoking as quickly as this one here. And then the last one that's already smoking and mostly because it's got some food built up on it. What we're going to do is also grab Salt. We're going to put on this last one here, put on the oil, we're going to rub it around. And what I'm going to do after I get the oil on, we're still at 7 on the temperature, and a little bit of salt on there. And I'm going to use some, quite a bit of paper towel, you don't want to burn yourself. But I'm going to use that, and I'm going to scrub it in with the salt. So this is just a kosher salt. Kosher salt will also uh, neutralized flavors. So if you've cooked something like fish in here and you've got a little bit of food stuck on there and it's you know it, it's a little smelly, um, as you're told often not to use soap, um, you're not neutralizing those flavors 
or the, the, the scents. So you can use some rock salt here to get your surface clean. And this is working out for us. So we're not gonna have to take this pan further down. We'll get the, the uh, temperature off. I turn this off now, it's smoking well enough. And we're gonna just scrub that in. So a little bit of a messy job with the salt kind of going places as I'm scrubbing around, but it's part of cleaning your pans if you've got something cooked on there. So that's down there. A little bit of salted um, paper, never a bad thing. Um, this guy here, the last one, we're going to turn that one off now. And we're going to just wipe that in there. Like so, give it a nice polish. So as you can see, the scratches are still in there because the seasoning underneath was still scratched. These are going to fill in some of the gaps and it's going to start building up. And over time, three, four, five, six uses, especially if we cook something at a higher heat using this, those scratches would start to go away. But what you'll see is you've got a nice sheen to that. That's still a bit moist. That still needs to dry. And this guy, last guy here that we had, the first one we had on, I'm gonna make sure we get that excess oil left off there. And we'll give it a nice cleaning. I always find the, the towel that I use with a little bit of salt on it, I really enjoy, but if I find that it gets the corners and I can feel actually there's a little bit of food built up right in the center of this pan. I can feel that through the cloth. So I'm gonna use a little bit more salt as I'm polishing and going right in the middle. So you polymerize the oil. You do not have to be worried at this time that you're gonna take your oil off. It's become a hard uh, coating on this pan. And the salt, being it's rock salt, but it's not hard enough to actually scour and scrape through it. It'll be melting with the heat at the same point in time. So it's really nice for being absorbent and helping just polish your pans. And just making that nice and smooth. If you do have a buildup of food, even when you've seasoned over top of it, it will stick and it will create a bit of a problem. So this guy has a little bit of texture in the middle here. I can actually see it now when I'm looking at it. There's a couple of, of good chunks of carbon on there. So that, those few chunks there, that's what I'm going over and what I'm feeling. So what I'm actually gonna do is, seeing that I know that those are there now, I'm gonna grab a, a bench scraper. I'm gonna see if I can just take it to that one area and scour that one area down. Instead of taking the whole surface down, I'm just gonna grab that one area. Yeah, and I've got that set off. And I've got a little bit more. Again, it's really nice. I can feel it with the paper towel as I'm going around and then um, seasoning the pan or pushing the seasoning around. I can feel these because I, I didn't really see them before. They were all kind of black in the bottom. But the texture, you know, that and there we go. That's nice and smooth. So what we're going to do is reheat that pan up and we're going to nail that one again and get it seasoned up. And so you can see there's now those couple of spots here that I've taken the seasoning grain off of and we'll just re-season that again and then that will be in great shape. So we've got nicely seasoned, just needs to dry up, be in shape. It's a little bit sticky in the corner there, you can see that. I was gonna go and take a paper towel to that and just take that down, but that'll be in good shape to go away. This guy here, he just needs to be cleaned out but he's, he's in beauty shape and ready to go. And then the one that I thought was just needed a little seasoning, needed a, a total repair. And, uh, but you know, really it took all of a minute. And um, that one will be in great shape. And then, so we'll move on to the next one. We're gonna heat this up and see what kind of stage this is at. Does this need to have 
just the salt uh, seasoning uh, and that's going to take it down or do we need to take it to the sink and scour it with a metal scrubbing? So this is that pan that we were looking at that had a lot of stuff stuck on to it. So it's smoking away because it's got food stuck on it. So the food is smoking on there. So what we're going to do here is get a bit of salt, kosher salt. And we're going to get some paper towel. And we're going to see if we can just get what's on there off with that. I like this process first because it's the what I think is the healthiest. You know, we're not using some sort of a detergent. We're not using uh, chemicals, especially that's going to be in something like a barkeeper's friend that has its place. There are certain times where we have to use that sort of stuff. We don't like to. I don't like putting it down the drain. I don't like putting it on cookware that we use to eat from. Um, you know, I'm very particular about how I cook. Uh, you clean the uh, cookware after you use something like that, but using a, a harsh chemical, it, it just has its place. We have to do it sometimes. So this is working really well. I'm, I'm quite happy with how this is all coming off. So we've got all of what was stick on there is, uh, is off and it's getting nice and smooth. So I'm gonna take it off the heat for a sec and just give it a little bit more of a polish because it was continuing to get pretty hot. And just gonna get the corners. They're a little bit sticky. Something like that. Corner. This goes by feel, kind of like the pan that I was doing before. I thought it was in perfect shape. And then once I started to push the paper towel around, I realized that it had some pretty heavy chunks stuck on the surface. And you'll just feel that as you're pushing around on the pan. So that is getting to a good spot tiny bit of texture but that's like some texture is totally fine but if you're feeling like you're going over a bump you've got to get rid of that okay okay so that's in great shape we'll get that cleaned off and then um, that's just going to need a seasoning now just a straightforward easy seasoning there's still quite a bit of of seasoning down low that like you can still see a little bit built on there that's not that big of a deal that's going to season up or become part of seasoning without a problem Okay, so of cast iron. This is French made cast iron that has an enameled uh, coating. I, I hesitate when I say coating because a lot of people think of coating as a non-stick coating, but this is enameled, so it is a baked on glass based uh, glaze that goes onto this. It is as hard as rock. Uh, it's very, very, very hard to chip it, even if you if you can try. But you know it can be chipped, but it's best not to to be aggressive with it. But it is super, super, super durable. Um, with this, the enameling, it is a, a protectant of the iron, so you have to be less concerned about it rusting. Uh, and what you'll find though is that it still needs to be seasoned and still gets dry, just like cast iron, and actually behaves a lot like cast iron a raw cast iron but it is just a little bit easier to look after and it looks beautiful also um, what's also really nice the way they enamel the bottoms of all the pieces of this stove is that it's got a nice smooth finish to it so it's good on a glass top like this one so what we're going to do is put this on to the top and we are going to uh, bring this up to again around a seven temperature and get the inner nice and hot and I'm going to put a nice layer of oil all the way around and season it in the same fashion that we've done all the other pans. So we've given this pan about five minutes or so to heat up. It's thick cast iron. You could leave this pan on here for half an hour and it would look the same. It's, it's not going to do anything funny like warp or burn. The reason it's not smoking is it doesn't have any food built up on it so there's nothing actually cooked out of it. Um, it'll just get as hot as you want it to and just sit and be there. So it's, it's, you know, it's amazing putting high quality cookware on a, on a hob like that. Induction luckily will actually shut itself off. So if you walked away and went and had a shower or went to mow the lawn or whichever, it wouldn't burn down your house, which is really fortunate. It's a nice benefit to induction hob. Okay, so I'm going to put in, again, same as the uh, other cookware that we did earlier. I'm just going to put in maybe a 
teaspoon, and this has been heating from the bottom, so the handle is not too hot, but I'm gonna get it into all the corners and all around. And the heat is nice and penetrated. It is a big, thick piece of cast iron, so it is, uh, takes a while for it to really kind of work, cook and work through. So something that's really important to know is that there's some misinformation out there is that some people will touch their cookware with a bit of grapeseed oil or, or do things correctly, but they won't heat that oil. So the problem with that is that the oils, the raw oils can go rancid, being left uncooked. You want to polymerize that oil. You want to harden the oil onto the surface. That is the seasoning. The hard, um, almost Teflon-like natural nonstick that you make with the grapeseed oil or canola oil or flax oil or seed oil, not a, a fruit oil, but a seed oil, will create a hard finish. It may have a, a tiny bit of a, of a tackiness to it, um, but it's not going to be wet. You do not want to make your cookware wet with oil and put it away. You, you will ultimately be successful because you're basically pre-oiling your pan for using it. But the problem is over time of the day or a week or whatever, however long it's been sitting around for, that oil will go rancid, it will oxidize, and that just isn't good for you overall, especially over long term. Little bits, death by a thousand cuts. You don't want to continue doing that, it's not healthy. So we are just letting that bake on. And cast iron is a little bit different. The carbon steel pans, we've got this guy over here. This was the one that we've cleaned up and he is in really nice shape. You can see that the, whatever was cooked on there before is left a little bit of a spot on there because it's peeled off and it's taken some of the seasoning with it. So we're gonna get that one on and start to heat that one up again. But the cast iron, the way in which it, it behaves, because it's so thick, it does everything really slowly. And so the heating up is really slow, the seasoning is really slow. It just takes a long time to season, or longer time to season your cast iron over in your carbon steel. Carbon steel, especially the, the Devire uh, Mineral B that we carry, is uh, tremendously thick for a, a, cast iron, a carbon steel cookware but nothing as thick and as heavy as cast iron. So it just takes a little bit more time. You have to be a little bit more patient. Okay, so we've let the cast iron boaster here cook for five or six more minutes. And we've got a really nice, even, matte, shiny finish to it across. This is still hot, so it needs to dry now. It'll dull up a little bit more but that is basically ready to go. And when you're using a pan like this, you can say cook some potatoes or what, some other veggies or a piece, couple of pieces of, of protein. And when you're done, what you'll find is that they take a little bit of a wipe down, everything beads off as you're washing and then it just goes away. There should be no soaking and scrubbing and detergents. It just, when it's seasoned well, you spend the time to season it and you won't have to spend the time to clean it. Uh, it really helps in, in just allowing it to just basically wipe out and put away. So we also just did this guy quickly and we just did that reseasoning on him. And again, that is needing to dry a little bit, but that's how the sheen needs, wants to look when it's finished. Okay, so we have a couple of pans here. They both happen to be crepe pans. But we find that people will buy a mineral pan, season it originally, things work well, but at some point, either in a month to six months, things start to go a little bit sideways and there's some frustration and confusion around why the pan that at first, when it was first season, was working as expected, and now things are going a little bit sideways. So fortunately this pan is in a perfect shape to explain this. So this pan here has food stuck onto it. It's got a kind of a sticky mess in the corner with a bunch of buildup. It's really dry in the center. Um, it's got kind of modeling of where the seasoning has kind of been peeled off for some reason by something. So it's in, not, it, it looks like a seasoned pan should, like that's the kind of color and the use of the pan, but it's not healthy looking. It's not shiny, 
it's not prepped, it's not ready to go, and it doesn't have layers built up on it. So this, if your pan is looking like this at home, what we're gonna do is show you how to quite easily and quickly get this into good working order. So we have two pans that are similar. This is another one that's got something cooked on it here. This one's not so bad as you can see, but it's really starting to go in that direction. It's starting to get some carbon buildup, something cooked right onto it. And so this one here is in better looking shape than this guy here, but he needs to be cleaned up. And again, we're just gonna go over that again to get both of these pans in great working order. So as before, we're gonna heat both of these up on a seven, give them a few minutes. We're gonna use uh, the, the kosher salt and just see how we can work these down. If these work down well, and I'm satisfied with how we get them down to the surface, we'll start building them up. But if not, we'll take them to the sink. And first we'll use some detergent and a metal scrubby. Uh, I don't see that we have anything on here right now that is in any, any sort of situation that we'll have to use anything harder than that, but we'll see how it works. Okay, so we've got both of these guys now on the hob. Whatever was cooked on, on here is now kind of cooking off, so that's gonna come off really easily. Not sure what was left on there, but I'm just gonna get a little bit of oil. That's just adding a little bit of moisture to help this work its way in. So we've got them. I'm gonna now, to clean these, I'm gonna turn the heat off a little bit. It's gonna stop things from smoking. Something you always be really cogn cognizant of at home is the amount of smoke that this kind of creates. So open a window, do it on the barbecue, uh, whatever. Whatever works there. My wife doesn't like when I create a lot of smoke in our house, so it is something that you want to do where you have really good ventilation. So it's kind of build, trying to get this off a little bit. It's not bad, but it may not be off. So I'll try the vent scraper. Get off with that. I really like using a vent scraper. It's it's not too sharp that you're gonna cut into and really damage the metal. And it's flat enough and easy enough. Yeah, that works great. So that's taken off the little bit of chunk in the middle that was there. You know, a bench creeper, of course, doesn't get into the corners that well, but a lot of time, the, the what's in the corners isn't cooked on as much as what you find uh, in the middle of the pan. The middle of the pan is where you get a lot of that heat build up, and things really love to cook on. So that's working really well. Now I'm gonna move on to this guy here, and he's got some solid build up of some oils in the edge. I'm gonna go after. And just get all of that out of the edge there, as you can see that all kind of peeling off. It's pretty sticky all around. There's not too much buildup, fortunately, on the pan when I go around. There's a little bit over here. So just be really careful of not burning yourself through the paper. Use enough paper. And yeah, no, it's uh, working well. So this pan here is polishing up beautifully. And it doesn't look like we are having an issue of anything whatsoever that we're going to have to do any deep cleaning. At the, uh, at the sink, which works out really well. So everything that we've done today has been able to be cleaned on the stove, and we haven't had to use a metal scrubby, which just saves time. Uh, it's not a big deal if you use a metal scrubby to take your surface down. All this does is just saves you a bit of time for seasoning that back up. Everything has just been fairly superficial, and we'll build up from there. So I'll get these guys cleaned up, clean the hob, and we'll, uh, we'll just season those up. I've cleaned up the two pans, and I've actually found that we've got some buildup of carbon still in a bunch of places here. 
So what we're gonna do is take this to the sink and clean this with a metal scrubbing. Okay, so I'm going to use a copper scrubby. These guys are absolutely fantastic. They, they're hard enough but soft enough to get the work done. Uh, and we're gonna take that extra carbon off. You may not have to, I just want to. I wanna have this you know, really nice, perfectly shaped pan uh, for using in the kitchen. So running it under some warm water. I'm just gonna lay it flat. You don't need to use soap here at all. It's the action of using your copper. Just go around in some circles. And the, while you're here, you might as well just make sure that the edges is where you get filled up. You start to get filled up. So I'm going around in the edges. The pan was quite warm when I put it in there. So a lot of what is on here was softened from having the pan heated up. So when we look at this now, we've got some marks in here. There's still some slight marks, but there's no syrup that's soft. So like they, they're, it, things stain on the surface, but it's not build up, it's not a sticky spot. And so now we can take that over to the hob and season that up. So we're bringing these back up to heat. This guy here that we just took over to sink, you can see now that he's quite a dull, kind of almost bluey color. There's quite a lot of seasoning taken off in the middle of that. So we're going to give him a really good bake and get a nice seasoning coating on there. Coating is something that you can't do in a big thick layer. It just doesn't really work. First you're using a really nice thin oil. And so this just thins really quickly, especially when it's heated. So you want to build your seasoning up layer by layer by layer by layer. And there's no amount of layers that makes for the best seasoning. It's about doing each layer really consistently and smooth, making sure that you don't have food built up in between those layers, keeping your pan in great smooth shape and building and building and building and building. This can happen either by post seasoning, seasoning after you're done, or you'll find if you're cooking really fatty foods, then you're going to season as you go, which is great. So you may finish cooking and you cook something that's really fatty. You finish, you wipe it out and it's like, okay, what's in perfect shape? It looks perfect. There's no need to, to reason to re-season then. You can just put it away. Just wipe it down, put it away. So these guys are now building some good heat. I'm gonna do what we've done before. Just give it like a teaspoon or less of oil. Get it all around the pan. And just that all the way around. These little, for, for us, as you can see, these guys here smoke that one. These little burners on our induction are hotter. And so it's good to be aware of that, which ones do a certain job. I find that these guys get really hot. I'm gonna bring the heat down a little bit. And I'm just building that up a little bit. As I wipe it off, I'm putting a little bit more on because this is the one that we took the seasoning further down on. This one here, just building up one. And there's still a little bit of texture. This one now is so perfect because we've taken the seasoning down. We have to build the seasoning up. But when I'm doing this one, it still has a little bit of texture. So I'm just going to polish that in while we're seasoning and use the salt. And I'm finding now that, you know, I gave this guy a good cleaning before and he's got some texture to him. That's not the end of the world. Um, you know, it's a, time is going to be the thing that you're always struggling with. How much time do you put into seasoning your pans? You know, if you've got your pan in good shape and it's not sticking on you, then it's fine. So a bit of texture when you're rubbing around. You know, I get really quite anal about the pans and I want them to be absolutely baby thumb smooth when I'm using them. But the reality is that if it is seasoned well and it's got a nice rock hard finish and it's not sticking, then you're in good shape. That's, that's how you know if it's good or not. People ask me all the time, how do I know if it's good? Well, if it's working, it's good. So we'll just let that dry up and then we'll clean those up. This guy, as you can see, he, this one 
keeps drying up. So I'm going to put even more oil on him and go around. You just want to get that right build up. So it's going to leave that to be nice and shiny and wet and cook on there before I wipe him down again. All right. And then that guy there, give him a wipe and let him cool. And once these guys are cleaned and wiped down, they'll dry, I'm going to be right ready to go. So I hope that this quick demo on how to season and post-season your, your fry pans and how to look after them after you've been cooking uh, is helpful for you. Our job is to make sure that you're successful using this type of pan in the kitchen. This is the only non-stick cookware that we sell because we don't believe in coated cookware. So we take this very seriously and we're there for you whenever you need help. You can reach out to us through coming in store, phoning us through Facebook, Instagram, uh, email, however you want. And we will do everything we can to make sure that you're successful using this sort of pan at home. So number one rule is never use a fruit oil. That means olive oil. Anyone that is cooking with olive oil, please stop cooking with olive oil. You will never be successful with this type of pan with olive oil. It just doesn't work. You need to use a seed oil. We use grapeseed oil. That works really well for us for everything that we do. So a grapeseed oil for seasoning and care and maintenance. And then as you saw, as I was using a nice quality, inexpensive kosher salt. You know, this will last a long, long time if you're using it specifically just maintaining your pans, but it's also a good um, bulk cooking.